Welcome to the Niche Pursuits Podcast. Are you ready to discover some niche business ideas that actually work? Well, it's time for a motivational kick to jumpstart your next big idea. Here's your host. All right. Hey, everybody. This is Perrin from Niche Pursuits. Um, so this is going to be a different call. This is probably the first call that you have ever heard or podcast, rather, um, from someone who is not Spencer. But most of you guys now know that I work for Niche Pursuits. And uh, I have uh, my fingers in a lot of different communities, and I've gotten to talk to a lot of different people, and um, consequently, I've heard lots of cool success stories. So I wanted to get someone really awesome on the horn so that you guys can kind of um, see the process of someone who has made a really successful niche site that's growing into some bigger things. So um, how this came about is – I was networking when I was doing my um, niche site project, which was a shaving site, which you guys all know, um, called apennyshave.com. And part of that process was reaching out to people in the community and, um, you know, exchanging favors and networking and getting to know people and making friends and trading guest posts and, um, you know, overall just a really fun process. And one of the friends that I made was a guy named Douglas Smythe. Am I saying that right? You are. Smythe, yeah. So um, Douglas runs a blog called howtogrowamustache.com, which was um, a site that I've been reading even before I started my own site and had always kind of loved it and loved the style. So he was naturally one of the first people that I uh, reached out to. And through talking to him, I kind of, you know, we were shooting the breeze and um, talking about strategy. And, you know, as I was learning about Douglas's projects, it just. Um, you know, dawned on me that this would be a really great case study for you guys to learn. So, um, so welcome, Douglas, and uh, maybe you can kind of introduce yourself and just in general the broad scope of your site. Oh, great. Well, first of all, it's great to be here, Aaron. Thank you for having me on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been, you know, since you've invited me, I've been trying to catch up to all the other episodes. And uh, it's a really great show. I'm just great, and I feel really uh, privileged to be a part of it. Oh, thanks. And well, for a little bit of background about myself, um, well, my name, as you mentioned, is Douglas Smythe, and I run a site called HowToGrowMustache.com. Uh, it's a niche site, <clears throat> um, kind of. I mean, it was a niche site. It was originally about how to grow a mustache, um, and I branched out from there, really, um, mm-hmm. when exploring, you know, the. I mean, how much can you write about a mustache is what it all comes down to. Yeah. Um, and that's, I, you know, eventually I hit that ceiling and realized I need to explore the sub-niches around it, which I recommend everyone do with their niche because there is only so far you can go with, with niches. So the sub-niches are important to branch into, and one of the sub-niches would be one of my passions, which is wet shaving. Yeah. So that's how I got into that and how it, it expanded. Very cool. So you started um, – so tell us maybe about the, the origins of the site. So you're sitting around on the couch, and, and you have an idea, and then and then what would you do? Well, uh, I've had a mustache for a long time. I've been okay. really into the facial fur scene, and uh, I, I find it quite fascinating. I'm not as passionate as some guys are, some of those whiskered warriors out there, but I, I'm really into it. I'm into seeing it done right and, uh, and, and uncheapening it, so to speak. I mean it's – <laughs> the mustache is kind of off the hook these days. You see the, you know, the bottle openers, the yeah. cars with it on. It's, that's, that stuff just makes me sick. It, it <laughs> yeah. just cheapens what I'm about, really. Yeah. So I want to, uh, you know, shed some new light on the mustache and, you know, teach people how to to grow a mustache. And, mm-hmm. and you know, it's not for everybody. Uh, you have to have the right face shape for it, first of all. Some people will make that mistake and, you know, you know, come to the conclusion they don't like mustaches simply because it doesn't look good on them or other people that they know that are doing it wrong. Um, so there was that. Um, but really, yeah, it was about, it was about grooming. It was about male grooming in particular. I mean, fashion, style, travel, everything young guys like us are into, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, it just all branches off, strangely enough, the mustache. (laughs) Yeah. So this was, I mean, so it sounds like it was a labor of love from the start. So before you, um, got started, did you know anything about internet marketing or SEO or building a website or... Where were you coming from before you, you started howtogrowamustache.com? Well, I've been doing graphic design for years and marketing. I had a, a small graphic design uh, or slash graphic art company for years, and I would you know constantly be asked by people, 
along with can I just design a website for them, also do I do SEO? And so that's pretty much how I fell into SEO. Or, or well, you know, it goes back even farther as well. If you talk to any graphic designer out there, nine out of ten times, the way they began was working for probably bands in high school, doing the flyers, doing the album covers. Yeah. A lot of them come out of the music scene, and so as as do I. And um, it's a form of guerrilla marketing that we all practice when you're in a band, which you may or may not know. And you know what I would be doing, promotion-wise, and this, like I said, this is where, for me, all SEO comes from is like real-time guerrilla marketing when you're on the scene. What I would be doing when I was younger is <laughs> now every town, every college town has those their newspaper, their rag mm. that has you know what's going on, shows that are coming up. What I would do is I'd make small flyers, and I'd hit up one of these boxes. I'd take a stack of them to my car, stuff them with my flyer, and then move on to the next box, take out the <laughs> new you know bunch of papers, bring it to my car, and put in my you know stuff ones in there. Um, you know, I would do this for every show uh, or magazines in the store. You know, I, I would be hitting people up. When my band had uh, albums being sold locally, I would, right when we got them in there, within that, the next week I would send in 10 friends with money to buy the album to create buzz. You know, yeah. and the record store would call me up and be like, yeah, it's, it's selling off the hook. In this way, they, they would talk it up. You know, and what's new? What's going on? Oh, this is selling really well. And, you know, I'd bring in, you know, the stack of albums again and be like, oh, here they are. You know, it was the same <laughs> stack he was already selling. But it's just about creating buzz. You know, fake it till you make it is what it all comes down to. So yeah. with that same strategy in mind, now we move it over digitally, and it's the same. It's the same thing, really. Mm-hmm. You know, something I'm passionate about, something I, I love doing. It. That's one thing about SEO as well is you really need to enjoy it. You yeah. know, if you're going to do it, do it well and not burn out. You really need to to enjoy it. Yep, big time. So, um, what was the like growth trajectory of how to grow mustache.com. So from the moment you started, you, you built the site. Um, when did you start to kind of see growth? I guess, when did you see the first trickles of traffic and, and growth and stuff? And then when did you know that you wanted to do it more as like a full-time project? That's a good question. Actually, I'm going to call it up right now with my stats because I don't remember them off the top of my head. But it's, it's, it's amazing, actually, if you just look at the – the graph. Um, so I think now we are a year old, and uh, it's just it's grown. It's grown so fast. Um, let's see. So my first month up. Okay, actually, yeah, it was February. So February, <laughs> the month of February, I had 242 views. <laughs> and this is in 2003, right? This is no 2013. 2013, yeah. This is oh, last yeah. year. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 2003. So, uh, yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, <laughs> the rank I had. Um, and then in March, only you know, less than a month later, I had 8,000 views. Yeah. April, 10,000. May, 17,000. June, 20,000. So so on and so forth. You see it growing, and then all the way up to let's just go. Let's stop at November. November, I had 87,000 views. <laughs> you know, so and that's to, you know we can thank November for that. And yeah. after that, it keeps going up. So. Yeah thousand and uh to where we are now and so it's just incrementally but fast it's building you know and that has a lot to do with my domain name yeah yeah so i guess so i mean are you doing this full-time now oh yeah yeah well i'm not only do i run the site i also create uh products as well i'm also a soap maker i'm an artisan soap maker so i have the how to grow mustache.com brand uh we sell synergy shaving soap which is blowing up right now um and it's another thing, really thinking outside of the box. I introduced this shaving soap in a five-inch tin. It's like a cd size tin, which gives you more surface area to load the brush yeah. faster. And you just spend my formula alone. It's really it's a, it's a wonderful soap, it's organic soap. And so from that launch, which was this last summer, the beginning of last summer, I started developing other pro- uh, pro- uh, sorry products, uh, lotions, aftershaves, colognes, so on and so forth. So yeah, it just built into that, you know, just having my own product. I tried, you know, uh, selling advertising space and whatnot and, you know, Amazon ads, and which is all fine and good, but I recommend everyone find their own product, be it, you know, software or hardware, you know, and yeah. it's just like you're, you're making your own money that way. You're not making a percentage. You're making, you're making your money back. <laughs> from yeah. The yeah. And it seems like, um, a lot of guys do that in this community. Like Leisure Guy has that shaving book, you know? Oh, yeah. And so I wonder, in your experience, if you think that your opportunities expand or to expand depend on your community 
I mean, to what extent would you say that that's true? Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, I think it's, it's the community is huge. It's, if you're in a niche, you need to find the people. You need to find them. You need to find the audience. You need to, find, you need to join the forums and participate. You yep. know, you need these people to trust you and to relate to you and realize that you're, hey, you're just another guy like them and you happen to have a site and you happen to have a product as well. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's very important. And where did you find the people? Because I know when, when we were kind of shooting emails back and forth and when um, we collaborated when we collaborated on the guest post that ended up on howtogrowmustache.com, the Tombstone Mustaches post, <laughs> yeah, you pointed sure. me to um, Wicked Edge, which I had no idea about. So, I mean, it, how did you go about finding your audience, I guess? Uh, well, okay, so this, is, this begins, this goes back to once you begin your website, you want to check out the competition. And I always say competition in quotes, you know, I'm doing the finger thing right now, because <laughs> – you know, the, the whole business model has changed now. Anyone who subscribes to that whole old school competition, you know, um, yeah. chase, you know, I mean, it's the rat race, um, give them a run for their money. It's, it's kind of foolish. What we all need to do that is join arms, really, and raise ourselves up together because there's room enough out there for all of us. Yes. And um, so, go, you know, checking out again the competition, you see who they're linking to, who they're involved with. Uh, definitely check out their backlinks. And through exploring that, you find the forums that they're part of as well. Right. And um, so that's what led me to a lot of forums and communities. It, you know, you just follow the trail is what it all comes down to. But see where everyone else is, you know, see who, check out the competition that's ranking the highest and mm -hmm. see who they're linked to. Yeah, I think that's a really important lesson. It's something that I talk about with um, my colleagues and my friends in this industry a lot is that, um, and it, it, it's also, I think, one of the biggest misconceptions about SEO. Um, is that you know if if you're targeting some keyword or if there's some big player in the niche that you should be scared of that when in reality it's it's usually the opposite i mean like you know spencer likes to say that there is um 10 spots on the first page so there's potentially 10 people who could rank for 10 different websites you know um so i guess like what role did making friends and networking play in the success of your website or even product. Oh, it's huge. I mean, it's just you know, it's so, it's another form of social proof when you're aligning yourself with the big names that are already out there. Yeah. You know, these these are the, the people everyone's listening to. Mm -hmm. So you want to reach out to them. You want to do an interview with them. You want to interview them. You want your name next to their name in your keywords. You yeah. know. You, so I mean, it's huge. <laughs> I definitely reach out to everybody. And see if you guys if you can collaborate with them, if they can collaborate with you, if you can do a guest post for them. So you, you want in, your name used in the same sense as theirs. Yeah, and you and I had a really good conversation about that because um, when I reached out to you, I you know I didn't even think about saying this is an SEO project because I like shaving and you like shaving and like I had read your website before, but you stumbled across the post that I made on its <laughs> pursuits, um, which has the, the term that I've always hated, which is ego bait, right? So there's, there is these. There it was are, obvious. <laughs> I, I I knew I knew that was a link bait uh, article from the get go. I never I never heard ego bait until I saw that on a uh, niche pursuit. Yeah, link baiting is what we used to, what we used to call it. I'm, I'm sure they're still calling it that as well. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like it's it's uh, it's a really unfortunate term because what I mean the what's most helpful for everybody, like with um like our sort of budding friendship and like the guys I've met over at like Sharpologist and Shaving 101 and um, Leisure Guy. I can't remember what his name is, but it's Michael Pam. Yeah, Mike. And um, what tends to work the best, at least in this community, and you know, I'm, I'm fairly new at this sort of thing, but what tends to work the best is like actually making friends with people and actually networking and actually doing projects together instead of treating everybody like your competition and you're trying to sort of weasel links out of them or something, you know? Oh, they'll, you know, they'll kill it. You'll be killed really fast. You'll be, uh, you know, a character assassinated in all the forums. And that's where, you know, Wicked Edge comes back in that form. Uh, that, I mean, that's a Reddit. It's a subreddit. Yeah. Reddit is the front page of the internet. I don't care what anyone says. It truly is. It, you mm -hmm. know? So, um, so yeah, and right there, if any any word gets out, they're gonna they're gonna kill you right then and there. So yeah. make friends, make it's really important, and, and it's again, it's something else like SEO. You need to fall in love with the process, yeah. and it may seem like a pain in the butt when you're first reading, you know, these techniques. 
oh, I wonder if my time you know come make comments or participate in forums stuff. But once you start doing it, it's like anything else, and you will start you 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 will be doing it without any intent or agenda in mind. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's really it's funny how it just takes over. Yeah, and you know maybe that's um, something to think about for people who follow along here who are just starting sites that it might really pay for at you know for your first site at least for sure um, to pick something that you're really interested in, you know like not just pick the best keyword you can find because the data looks good but I think um, for both of our experiences a lot of our success has come from you know, just thinking our subject matter is cool and, and liking it and enjoying talking to other people about it. It's more organic this way. Right. I, you don't really need to look at the keywords and the stats. What it all comes down to is your knowledge of it, of the subject, and the quality of what you're putting out. Yeah. You know, you can have the best keyword in the world. You can do all these hits. But if you're, your articles are crap, yeah. who cares? I mean, I've gone to so many poorly written blogs. I'm like, oh, my God. They, they, they're following the old content is king. Yeah. mantra, which is not true at all. <laughs> it really isn't, especially nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, quality is king. Saying content is king is saying well, practice makes perfect. Practice is not make perfect. Practice makes you better. Let's yeah. keep it real. So yeah. quality content is king. And yeah. the only way to write quality content is being passionate about it and in love with your subject and your topic. So that's the most important thing. Your keywords, and all, it, it'll all come. If you're putting out something good, the people will come. As long yeah. as you're participating in the forums, too. You know, as long as you're out there and mm -hmm. you're making a name for yourself and people you become a trusted source, you know, they're going to sense the passion behind it. Uh, so you really can't fake that. You've got to really, got to be really into your niche, I believe. Yeah, for sure. And that was kind of a lesson that I learned the hard way um, because I tried – because I knew that eventually I wanted to spend more time on promotion than I did on writing articles <laughs> yeah. um, because that's just what I enjoy. And yeah. so I – I went to a bunch of different tech services, tech. I'm sorry, content services, mm -hmm. like textbroker.com and that sort of thing. And I ordered some articles, and I never used any of them. And what yeah. I, I mean, just because you know, even if they're well written, they're passionless, <laughs> you know, yes. because yes. I mean, they're just like dry. They have no personality. So what I ended up doing is turning to my social networks and hiring people who I knew could write, who I knew liked to write, and who I knew were interesting people themselves. So what I ended up doing for A Penny Shaved is um, mostly hiring my brother who, you know, is all about the gentlemanly arts and, you know, like <laughs> reads GQ and dresses well and likes shaving, you know. And maybe I should hire him too. <laughs> yeah, maybe, right? And, uh, and his articles are great because, he, you know, he's not just writing an article for money. He is, yeah. you know, having some fun doing it. No, so people can tell. People, you, how many articles have you read? I mean, then you're like, this is just for content alone, and it's it's so regurgitated and diluted. It's like this is valueless. Yeah, <laughs> happens all the time. Yep, it really does. So, one of the things that I'm most interested in about your site, um, because as I start to grow in this career, in, in this field, I'm really interested in kind of di diversifying my traffic and learning how to tap into people and through a bunch of different avenues because right now I feel like what I know how to do is get Google traffic. But there's so many other opportunities out there, you know, like Pinterest, Twitter, Facebook, Reddit. Um, and so I know you have a fairly big Facebook audience, at least a couple thousand people. Um, and having tried that for about two or three weeks now, I have like 40 people or something. So maybe you can give us some clues about how to use social media to, you know, expand your reach. Okay. Yeah. I mean, well, there's always the link wheels, but uh, people can really Google that if they want to get into link wheel building. Um, what I would say, especially if you have a blog that's receiving, you know, a good amount of traffic now. You can use your blog to build up your social media. And one really easy way to do this is to hold a giveaway. Mm -hmm. I recommend a monthly giveaway. Do this for six months, maybe. And as one, one of the requirements for entering is they have to like your Facebook fan page. They have to join your Google Plus community. Um, they have to follow you on Pinterest. You know, give them something. Look at your blog. Look at your social media, rather, and see what, where are you lacking. What do you need? That's what you put down as a requirement to enter the giveaway. You can set the giveaway up through using AWeber or MailChimp, you can right. sign up box and whatnot. Um, and so you're, it's, it's, it's really twofold here. Not only are you, you know, 
putting some meat on your uh, social media pages, but you're also building your, your uh, mailing list, which yeah. is as good as gold. You know, I'll repeat so many people when, you, when they say, at the end of the day, all you have is your mailing list. Your, your site could crash tomorrow, but you will always walk away with this mailing list. Yeah. Which is, you know. So yeah, that's, that's what I would, I would recommend. I would recommend also, well, using YouTube. YouTube is awesome. It's also like the second largest search engine in the world. Mm -hmm. So really take advantage of YouTube. I would recommend creating tutorials or reviews, uh, etc. Something relevant to your niche. Yeah. Maybe have a commercial name. You know, you can go to Fiverr. Fiverr.com is a really great site uh, where you can outsource all types of jobs for five bucks. Some, you know, a lot of them are pre-made and they'll just put in your logo or something like that. So find a funny little commercial. So find something to put on YouTube um, relevant to your niche. And in the about page or the about section of YouTube, make sure your website's up there, uh, hyperlink to your website anyways. It's the first thing in the about section on the YouTube uh, yeah. tutorial, whatever it is. Um, and I mean, what I'm saying here. <laughs> yeah, so I guess like how many um, – and obviously, you know, your site's still – I mean it's extraordinarily successful, but it's still relatively young. So how um, how much of your traffic comes from those sources? Oh, I get thousands of hits a day from these sources. Just to take it back to YouTube for a second, another thing I would do if you do work on doing a tutorial or a review is create a transcript for that too so it's closed captioned. Yeah. And use all your keywords inside the tutorial, or if you're just writing the transcript after, drop them in there, and this will make it even more searchable. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. And uh, where where did the tutorial go? I mean, go I, mean, I mean, sorry. I mean, the uh, transcript? The transcript, you'll see it uh, when you're editing or when you're posting your uh, YouTube video. Mm -hmm. You have an option for putting in a transcript or closed captions. Then you just cut and paste in your notes. Yeah. And um, yeah, so that makes that even more searchable. It's awesome, actually. Uh, as for Facebook, I get you know so many hits from Facebook. And again, as with YouTube, um, a lot of people miss out on this. But in the About section of your Facebook fan page, make sure you put your hyperlink first. Not only would you drop it in the section where they're asking for your website, you would also put it first and foremost at the top of your About page. This way, it'll be right under your profile picture. Mm -hmm. You can also connect your giveaway that's you're having on that's happening on your site to your Facebook page as well. Right. There's apps on Facebook where you can do this. Um, so you know, so build it up like that. Make it really easy for people to find your site. Uh, also, post every day on Facebook. I don't care if it's one of your own articles. You can always recycle old articles too that you think are still relevant. Um, but other people's articles as well, like an 80-20. You know, maybe 80% other people's, 20% yours. Yeah. Um, and the way to find relevant topics and articles to your niche is to use a social aggregator like Zite. I use Zite on my phone, and when I have nothing to do, I'm sitting you know, at a coffee shop, I'll go to Zite, and this is collecting all the different things I'm interested in, and segmenting, or segments of all the stuff I'm just interested in, like maybe mustaches or wet shaving, and it'll give me a stream of all the articles that were just released this week on that subject. I will take one of those and shoot it to my email, and when I get home, I'll post that. So uh, using social media is just a great and quick, quick way to uh, find a lot of articles out there relevant to your niche that probably take you hours to find on your own. Yeah. Awesome. So again, I'm sorry, keeping, in, and keeping with the whole theme of social media, do the same thing with your Google community page. Mm -hmm. uh, do the same thing with Twitter. Yeah, putting out these articles. The thing with Facebook is more, while you're putting out these articles, you, what you want to do is it's going to be provocative. It's going to be something interesting, something that people will like. Uh, you can also use Photos, something that's really eye catching that people will like. The more people, whenever someone likes a photo or something on your, your wall, you will show up more in their newsfeed for, for the next 10 days. Yeah. So if you keep them liking you all the time, you're always going to be in their newsfeed where you want to be. Right. That's awesome. Very, very, very good tips. Yeah. And um, so I guess one of the things that, and we should probably move on just for time's sake, but. Um, when you say hold a giveaway, is it like an event or is it something as simple as just like a like a widget on your sidebar saying like, hey, we have this giveaway every month. Please like our Facebook page to enter or something. It would, it would be a, a widget for uh, in your sidebar for, for signing up. Yeah. But you would create an article around it too. 
So the article would be, you know, and it could be in your uh, menu bar, give away, they click on that, it takes them to the article. Mm -hmm. In the article, it points to the sidebar saying, sign up here. Yeah. Uh, and what, what you'd be giving away, I mean, I'm sorry, would you ask me what you'd be giving away? No, I mean, I was, uh, okay. yeah, I was asking kind of how you would promote that giveaway. How would promote that giveaway? Yes, I would do it with an article first. The article I would release to all my social media once it's up. It's a monthly thing, so the first of the month we would post this on Facebook, on Twitter, on Reddit, so yeah. on and so forth, right across the board. Um, products I would use in the giveaway would probably be maybe something I've reviewed in the past, whoever you're reviewing. Ask them if they want to contribute to the, you know, the monthly giveaway basket. And everyone does, everyone wants to. Um, yeah, and you can really load up the basket that way. Very cool. Very cool. Very good ideas. So, um, well, and there's also, I'm sorry to keep going, but there's also uh, this Pinterest, mm -hmm. this Instagram. Uh, a lot of people are getting hit to these forms of, of marketing, and, uh, and I think that's with uh, good reason. <laughs> They're very effective. Yeah. Pinterest, especially. This goes back to your articles now and your blog. Um, you want to use eye catching photos, something very provocative that people want to share. Yeah. You also want to get permission to use these photos from people. Right. Uh, which sometimes takes a little bit of time for them to get back to you. If they don't get back to you, or if there's something you really just don't have time to get permission for, some people will walk away from that. I don't I don't walk away from that. I, I take that image, I reverse it in Photoshop, I add some filters to it, sometimes I collage it with other images, I make it my own. It's like sampling what a DJ does with music. Yeah. You know, so I cut you know, cut it up, make it my own image, slap my website on it. Um, less as a um, uh, a watermark and more as a link back to my site, <laughs> you know. Right. And again, I I would once I release an article, I would post it to Pinterest. I have first I have all the social buttons on my blog so people can share my article immediately. Yeah. And I'm the first one doing that. Since the article is released, I'm going right to Pinterest. I'm posting it there. And again, in the about section, I'm putting my website first, hyperlink it, mm. and then hashtags, and then the description of the article. And then I go to Instagram. In Instagram, what I would do is make a special header for that. Uh, square in shape. You could also use this on your blog. You could always use a square header so that it will fit in the Instagram right. as well on that. Um, and with that, you know, special header with the title, the byline, and your website. Yeah. Um, let's see. And what I would do is then upload that to my phone. And there is an app called Wireless Transfer App, mm -hmm. which is, I don't know if you've seen this. I this have not. Is, it's, it's great. So you can upload from your computer to your smartphone library uh, by using this app. That's a wireless transfer app. And um, then, yeah, you put it right on Instagram, all your hashtags, add them first to the description, then a little brief breakdown of what the other is about, and the link. Hashtags are important. If you're constantly releasing the same article or the same, um, uh, well, I'm sorry, if you're constantly releasing the same themed articles that you have be using the same hashtags over and over again. I suggest you just keep them in your notebook on your phone so you can just cut and paste it. It take less time for you. But yeah, so that's uh, Instagram and Pinterest. Very important. There's other things too. If you're involved in the male grooming, there's other there's male versions of Pinterest. Uh, Mantrusting, um, Gentleman. These are other sites I would definitely check out and get involved in. But those are, those are some tactics for you. <laughs> Awesome. Gentle Mint. I'm taking notes from my own site. Yeah, gentle Mint. Gentle Mint. Yeah, and man interesting. Awesome. Very cool. Also, Dude Pins. Dude Pins? Dude Pins. Yeah. And then there's Google Alerts, uh, which is kind of dying. You may be familiar with Google Alerts. What's that? Do you know Google Alerts? Yeah, yeah. I do okay, it's, it's dying, it's dead, it's not where it used to be. The new one is Mention.net. I don't know if you're familiar with Mention.net. Mention.net. This is great for monitoring the web or your keywords mm -hmm. uh, or your brand and whatnot. See where people are talking about it. This is another great way to find forums and find communities you probably wouldn't have found, or if you did, it would take you a long time. To right. mention, you can see where people are talking about you and your brand. Your brand. Yeah. And if you like me, go right there. It's free to sign up. I think you get so many mentions before you have to sign, uh, upgrade to a pay plan. But yeah. mention.net, check that out too. Yeah, very useful tools here. Just from you know glancing at them as you've been talking, like very cool um, tools that I can investigate and maybe incorporate into my marketing strategy. 
Definitely, definitely. It goes with anything. You know, like when you release an article, you should have the battle plan on a piece of paper in front of you. What you, What is your regimen that you do every time that article comes out? The yeah. first thing you do is you do Pinterest. You go right down your toolbar with you know the different buttons: Pinterest, um, Gentleman, Dude Pins, Facebook, Google Plus. Um, go every single time. Do it the same way. Right. <laughs> That'll also uh, build your cloud report as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hundred percent. So, um, one of the things I really was curious about with your site and we touched on this briefly earlier um but one of the things that i was really curious about because it is cool and because a lot of people don't take this step um is your product so i think what a lot of people do with niche sites they build a site they get it to where it's making 500 or a thousand dollars a month and then they stop and you know they work on another site or they try to build a portfolio that way um or some people might, you know, build out a larger authority site that's, you know, making a couple thousand dollars a month or something. But um, it's very rare, I think, to see somebody take a niche site and expand it into a full business where they're offering some sort of product. So I'm really curious about that process for you, sort of like what made you make that decision and how you went about getting the product developed and then um, how you promoted it and then, you know, how it's doing. <laughs> well... Since my, you know, my, my site is dedicated to facial fur and male grooming, it, it wasn't really that difficult. Right. Um, I also have a background in soap making, you know, something I was doing in college. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I, and having interviewed all these different artisans and soap makers, you know, it was a lot like going to college. Like, I forced myself to learn about my niche. And that's the thing when starting a niche. Either be passionate about it, something you already have a knowledge on or of, mm -hmm. or it's something you want to learn and take your readers with you on that journey. Um, Mine was a little bit of both. I had a background in this. This is something I was really interested in. Um, but I still, there was much more to learn. And so interviewing these different folks involved in the industry was like, it was like four years of college packed in six months. You know, I get to ask questions that normally people couldn't ask. Uh, I wouldn't always release some of the answers. I was like, well, that's too good. You know, and I put it in my, in my back pocket. And uh, yeah. eventually I just built up my knowledge base on how to make these products and what works and what doesn't work. And then I, I was also doing reviews on so testing stuff. I knew what I liked and what I didn't like. Mm -hmm. I, I kept notes. I uh, got a little crazy almost. Uh, I bought like you know, 20 different shaving brushes. Um, I was having friends send me different types, different water samples from where they live because I wanted my soap to work in all types of water. Yeah. Hard water, soft water, so on and so forth. At different temperatures, I needed to have a, a really big sweet spot temperature-wise to build the maximum amount of lather. So I really got scientific about it. Mm -hmm. And I started started studying with uh, Francis and Hodges from Petal Fisher Fancies, awesome soap makers. I really fell in love with their soap. And so I hung with them in their lab for you know, probably longer than what I should have. I probably overstayed my welcome there, but I really picked their brains. And they helped me develop my own formula. And uh, that's really it. You just got to fall in love with the process. And even, anyone can do software, it's, it's automated, and it might be right for you or for them to do. But I'm more of a hands-on type of guy. I like to do tutorials. Uh, you know, the art of manliness was kind of an inspiration for me, too. It was also someone that I wanted to take down. But, I mean, what they, <laughs> what they got going on there is, like, it's really, you know, it's like I'm kind of the same way. I'm like, no, 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 I'm like a, a, a guy type of guy. But I'm like, no, I like to work with my hands. I like to build stuff. Yeah. It just made much more sense to me. And it also keeps me really busy kind of trouble. So, uh, yeah, and I just I fell in love with the products. Fell in love with, it's just putting everything you're into in one spot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you'll never leave the house. You'll never see the sun again. I work 28 <laughs> hours a day. But, again, I love every minute of it, and it's not for everybody. So yeah. really think it out first before you just pop into something like this. It's not as easy as some people, or romantic as some people make it out to be when it comes to, like, Etsy stores and yeah. working for yourself. You really got to be passionate and love what you do. So this is a very different model than some internet marketers who are, say, drop shipping some product. Um, it's you are doing much, much more than just slapping your logo on some pre-made soap or something. You are physically in your garage making this stuff. <laughs> yeah, I have a workshop, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I am doing that. And I look at the drop shipping. I look at the. I'm the type of person that I mean, again, it has to be something I like and something I would use, something I can get behind. Mm -hmm. But I, I looked at all this stuff. I looked at a, you know. Um, at using my space to advertise for others, I threw everything against the wall is what it comes down to, and yeah. work with what sticks. 
And that's what I recommend everyone do. If you're going to build your own product or create your own product, uh, don't fall in love with it from the get-go. Test market it first. Yeah. And be able to let it go if you have to. If it's not doing anything, it's not moving, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So don't fall in love with your product at first. You may love it. You may love the hell out of it. But it's, if it's not going to sell, it's not doing you any good. Yeah. So throw everything against the wall. Everything you're passionate about anyways, throw it yeah. against the wall. Yeah. That's very, that's, passion is the key word here if you, if you don't want to burn out. Mm-hmm. What yeah. sticks, you use. What doesn't, you throw back. <laughs> yeah, totally. And if you don't mind asking, how is the product doing? Oh, so wonderful. Uh, I invite anyone to Google Synergy Shaving Soap, and uh, we're everywhere. I mean, it's a really, it's fantastic. I, I still don't believe it. You know, I kind of, I, I get, <laughs> granted, I did put a lot of time into the development, and uh, it's it's a great shaving soap. All, my whole line of products, the colognes, the aftershaves, the bombs, it's really, it's just blowing up, you know? It's something I'm really passionate about. Yeah, and so is that becoming... Um kind of your staple business now? That is my business, yeah. Very cool. Yep, I'm a, a wet shaving software developer is what I call myself. Wet shaving <laughs> software developer, I like it. <laughs> I like it. And it's in a, you know, it's a really cool direction to take. Um, it also, I think, is a very good lesson that, you know, if you're doing SEO, it doesn't just mean, you know, slapping AdSense on your site. There's so many no. things you can do. And, um you know, if you find something that you really like doing or you really like building or you really like writing or whatever, um, you can use SEO as a platform to get that out into the world. Yes, you can use it relatively quick. And if you do come up with your own product, another great way to get backlinks is um, the press release. Some people overlook the press release. Uh, again, go to Fiverr.com, outsource someone to write it for you for five bucks, outsource someone else to get it up there for you in all those different PR sites. And now you have other links coming back to your site. Yeah. You know, aside from you know the blog, the site, the products, I also have a podcast too that I, I probably should mention. Uh, <laughs> I run a podcast with my co-host Ryan, a documentary filmmaker Ryan Stephen Green, called Mustache and Blade. Yep. Uh, I highly recommend checking that out. That's another thing that's helped me grow my site as well is the podcast. Yeah, it's huge. Our first month alone, we were on the front page of iTunes in the new and noteworthy. Uh, Possibly due to the fact that this was November or November, so we were beating Art of Mail in this podcast also, uh, oh, which awesome. felt really good. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But, yeah, I mean, it's really, and that's another, you know, I, I can't stress starting a podcast enough. It really, I mean, the playing field has been leveled, people. You really, you can get out there in front of everybody, inside everyone's heads, at the gym, in yeah. their car. You are their best friend. Uh, I mean, they know your voice. Other companies have for years. No company could do stuff like this. Where people are listening to you all over the world, you know, they're recognizing your brand. They, they they're hearing you speak. You're, you're just you're becoming an expert <laughs> without even trying. Yeah, and I think there's a weird barrier for a lot of people to a podcast. I mean, like some people are shy, but also for you know, in the past, it's felt like something that only bigger people do. Like you know, like. Empire Flippers or Spencer or, you know, someone who already has a huge audience is doing a Pat podcast. <laughs> Pat Flynn, yeah. Um, but, you know, it can work for smaller sites in different niches too. And, you know, speaking of Pat Flynn, we see him doing that in the new niche site duel for his food truck website. Oh, he, yeah. He has a podcast about food trucks um, that is bringing in traffic, you know? Yeah. No, he does. And it, or his first site, which was a security guard site. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, I'm glad you brought up Pat um, that's another another really good thing to do once you start doing these things, once you start creating a niche blog, a, a niche site, a niche podcast, is continue to listen to the podcasts that inspired you. Listen to more SEO podcasts. Yeah. Uh, it, it keeps the fire burning while you're driving. It'll keep it going longer. Uh, you could burn out. These, this, you need a little bit of inspiration. I, I say keep that information coming, you know? Yeah. <laughs> if you're blogging, pick up every book you can on blog. I mean, you, granted, you can find all this stuff online, but sometimes books just put it all in one place. Yeah. When I began this journey, it was all about studying it. But this is what I do with anything I get into: is I buy every book I can on the subject. Yeah, me too. Uh, same thing with podcasting. You know, the, what inspired me to podcast might have been Pat Flynn, even. Yeah. But just listening to like, uh, or what's his name? You know, there's a bunch of people out there. This podcast on podcasting. Yeah. And it just it, it inspires you. Plus, you're listening to such great quality sounding podcasts that when you begin your own. You know, they've sent, set the benchmark for you. Yeah. I listen to other people's podcasts. I'm like, wow, this is crap. Or not crap, <laughs> but it's just like sound quality. It takes me about 10 or 12 hours to edit every episode I do. Yeah. And 
I realized listening to other people's podcasts, I don't have to do that. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, like, you don't have to do it. What matters in the podcast is the quality of the po- or the, the content. You know what you're talking about. That's the first thing. Um, quality comes second. I again, but I, I'm glad I did it right the first time. I wanted to come out with a big bang, and I didn't want people to notice. Oh, it's getting better. It's evolving. You know, sound quality. You know, I wanted to just sound great from the get go. Yeah. So I invested in all the you know top notch equipment from day one. Um, but yeah, no, I highly recommend people start a podcast. They're great. And it's, sometimes you can do you can do something with a podcast that you can't always do with your blog. You can't always you know do with your site. And it helps you make friends. You know, like it's it's very flattering to people to say like, hey, do you want to be on my podcast? So like, <laughs> it's a, it's a really good networking opportunity. Plus, you know, it's I mean, instead of just emailing back and forth with someone, you get to talk to people, which yes. is um, which is big. Oh, it's huge, and you're right. It definitely, I've had a lot of great opportunities that I never would have stumbled upon otherwise if it wasn't for my podcast. Mm-hmm. You are making a human connection. Yep, yeah, big time. And you know, that's one of the unexpected perks of doing SEO is that um, you know you sort of build your sites to become parts of communities, and then you end up making cool friends. I mean, since I started my shaving site, I've made not only a bunch of friends in the shaving community, but also a bunch <laughs> of SEO friends, you know? it's a, Yes. And uh, that's definitely part of the fun of, of this um, this weird little internet world. Oh, yeah, no, totally. And you're right. It's an internet world. I, I like going to the coffee shop because you can always tell who's in the same boat as you. you yeah. <laughs> and they have that same like, peak kid, like, I haven't seen the sun in days look, <laughs> yeah. you know, shaking. Yeah. Uh, and then that's another great way to make people, oh, you get a blog? You know, so it's, it's nice kind of to connect with people in your local area that also are blogging mm-hmm. as well. Even yeah. having meetups and whatnot, uh, sharing tips and what, you know, tips and tricks and what they do, you know, and, it's, and again, a great place to find them. I call them coffee shop millionaires. People love them, it seems. But uh, yeah, go to the coffee shop. You can find them immediately. Yeah, totally. And, you know, I spend so much of my time in the coffee That's like my, where I work. You know, that's my, my office. A uh, bunch of different offices. They're different coffee shops. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> For sure. A good trick, actually, this is a good thing. If you really want to get stuff done in the coffee shop, like you need to get this article out. You're not in love with doing it, but you have to do it. It's been days. Go there, but leave your power cord behind. Make sure your PC or your Mac is charged. But go there, so now you will not be distracted. Even if someone you know walks in, you're busy. You yeah. only have so much time to work with. So right. don't bring your cord with you when you go to the coffee shop and get far more done people. I mean, what a good little life hack. Give yourself a... <laughs> There's a few of them. Another one is... Uh, Notebooks. Notebooks are, you know, they're, they're, they're old-fashioned, but, you know, they come in so handy. Especially, you know, you're driving and you listen to a podcast, you're getting tips. One of the greatest things to have is one of those, like, little notebooks that mount to your windshield. So you can jot down something really quick. A lot of people use the notebook setting app on their iPhone. You can't do that if you're listening to an iPod, though. You can't multitask while you're driving. Right. You can jot down that website. You can jot down that tip really quick. Also, keep one of these little pads in your pocket, up your jacket, next to your bed. Sometimes you can't sleep at night because you keep you know, this mental list over and over again what you have to do the next day or an idea that just came to you. Oh, I'll remember that. I'll remember that. You never remember that. Yeah. Write that down right away. Not only will you sleep better, you're not going to lose that idea. Yeah. Uh, another great thing, keep these note- notebooks in, um, in your car, in your ba- uh, big notebook. That is. So if you're in a wait, you're waiting in a line, you're in a waiting room for whatever, you can work on an article. Um, which brings me to article ideas. Um, create a list when you're beginning your niche site of all these different ideas, all yep. these different ideas for articles. Where do you find these articles, ideas? Go to question sites like ask.com. See where all these questions are being asked in, you know, in relation to your niche. And sometimes they're answered, sometimes they're not. But take that question and create an article out of it. If the answer's there, expand upon that. Boom, you have an article. Yep. So that's a great place to get, one of the great places to get article ideas. And keep these on the inside the cover of all your notebooks, the same list. And whenever you have a few seconds, say so the battery just died in your computer and you're still just trying to finish your coffee, now you can work on that article. At least start it. Once you get that first opening sentence or first paragraph, you're on your way. It's almost yeah. done. You just need 500 words, you know? So always keep a list of the articles you'd like to write in that notebook or at hand. Yep, very good tip. And um, <laughs> so I I know we've touched on a, just a ton of stuff today. And I know. I have so much more for you. I just I didn't know how this was going to go, but I wrote down like close to 40 tips. <laughs> I had 100 tips. <laughs> I just, you know, split, you know, spit out. But uh, <laughs> it's going good. Yeah, yeah. No, we touched on a ton. So maybe – and I, I, I kind of want to leave everybody with – the most important one. So I guess from from your point of view, if if you were going to 
boil down your experience and these lessons that you've learned into, you know, three or five really actionable tips for somebody who's relatively new, um, what, what would you tell that person? Um, find a great domain name. Find, and, you know, I would use like a long tail keyword. I would use a question. Mm -hmm. that, you know, go to these sites. Uh, rather than seeing where these, these keywords are ranking and whatnot, I would just come up with a, a damn good question that everyone's asking out there and make that your domain name. Yeah. Make that your brand name. You know, yeah. wrap yourself around that, um, you know, and then research your niche. Not only your niche, but the sub niches around that and try to incorporate them if you have to. You, know, you might have to <laughs> when yeah. you run out of ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, also, create um, a page on your site seeking guest writers. Yeah. You don't have to be a huge blog to have guest writers. Everyone wants to be a guest writer, everyone wants to get their, their links from you. So, yeah. you know, create a, a page for that, seeking guest posts, and in your uh, Permalink for that have seeking guest posts because <laughs> that's yeah. what people are looking for. Permalinks are very important. I know I didn't touch upon them at all. Google with people, but you yeah. want them to be right. You don't want a number. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing with images as well. If you're using images in your blog, don't just have like IMG2314. Give it a name. Give that image the name of the article or what's going on in that picture. Make it searchable for Google images and make sure your, your address is on there. You know, your website address is on that photo. Mm -hmm. That will drive a lot of traffic. That I think so many people, and I know you do this too, Karen, you go to Google Images first, yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. And so you want it searchable. Make sure you give that image that you're using a searchable title in relation to the article or your site. So mm -hmm. those, are, those are some big ones for me. And also make sure the image size is not huge. <laughs> yeah, jeez. Yeah. Geez. yeah. <laughs> Cool. All right. Well, um, we appreciate it. I mean, I have learned a ton from you. I mean, not not just today, but in our uh, email correspondence over you know the past couple months. So um, thanks a lot. I'm gonna have to buy some shaving soap, I think. <laughs> yeah. Check out how to grow a mustache store dot com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A little product placement. Um, but thanks, and uh, we hope to have you back. And everybody should definitely go check out the site. And um, yeah, if anyone has any questions, you can always contact me. Email me at whiskers at howtogrowmustache dot com. Or you can also check out my weekly podcast at Mustache and Blade. I'm sorry. You can also check out my weekly podcast, which is Mustache and Blade, which can be found on iTunes or even on my site. Just click podcast in the menu bar. It's highly entertaining, especially for men. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, um, thanks, thanks for having me, Karen. Yeah, thank thanks you. a lot. Really, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, cool. awesome. uh, we'll talk to everyone soon. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. Yeah.